Market on Close. I'm Caroline Woods in for Oliver Rennick. Let's talk restaurants with Andy Barish, Managing Director of Jeffrey's Restaurants and Coffee Shops, I should say. So, uh, Andy, let's start with McDonald's because shares are under pressure today off about three tenths of a percent. They've had a nice run really since July, call it, uh, but only up about two percent year to date. This is a name, though, you're bullish on. You think it can have about twenty seven dollars upside from current levels. Tell us why you like McDonald's. Yeah, thanks for having me, Caroline. McDonald's uh, had a really good third quarter because um, they pivoted and uh, really started their efforts to reestablish their value leadership in the quick service restaurant category. And it's um, it's paying early dividends. I think we've seen the worst of the uh, traffic declines at the at the business in the U.S. And that was what put pressure on the stock in the first half of the year. So. We expect um, sequential improvement as they move through um, the rest of this year and into 2025. So that's uh, kind of underpinning our um, continued buy rating, even though, as you mentioned, the stock, um, you know, the stock has had a nice move here recently. So, yeah, you have a buy rating and three hundred and thirty dollar price target. I did see the upside case is three sixty five. What would get it all the way to three sixty five? What needs to happen? Yeah, they'll, they'll launch their full value um, kind of assortment, I guess I'll say, at the beginning of the year when um, when consumers are typically looking for, you know, promotions and discounts coming out of the holiday season. So that'll include um, the five dollar value meal, but also individual price points and probably some breakfast uh, promotions, all of which are, you know, kind of important to McDonald's regaining its its value leadership and typically in tougher choppy times um, that is when mcdonald's tends to uh, push its market share you know regain loss share and then continue to have share gains so we think with that you'll have positive same store sales in the u.s and that will um, continue to propel the stock in addition to uh, the potential for increasing unit growth globally as well as some opportunity uh, to maintain or even expand industry leading margins in the mid to high 40 percent uh, level for operating margins. OK, so bottom line, how much of your bullishness has to do with the fact that McDonald's is uh, offering those five dollar meals for longer? Well, I, I think, you know, the the earlier summer um, launch of the five dollar meal was just the opening salvo. So. Uh, I think, you know, there there is more to come, and I, I that is a big part. I mean, the stock does trade on its um, U.S. comps, but I also think, as I mentioned, there is um, uh, uh, an intermediate-term part of the story that can continue to propel the growth and thus the valuation um, with more global unit growth to be uh, more similar to its uh, some of its global peers like Domino's and Yum as well as the opportunity, um, you know, to kind of continue to uh, focus on margins through some uh, G&A reductions. OK, so shifting from McDonald's, where you can get a $5 meal, to Starbucks, where you can get a $5 grande iced tea, not as bullish on Starbucks. In fact, you have an underperform rating and a $76 price target, about $20 below, more than $20 below, where it's currently trading, basically back to the levels uh, before CEO Brian Nickel was announced. So you think that this run up that we've seen because of Brian Nickel is unwarranted? I think it's just too much too soon. I mean, uh, we we like Brian. We we think he's he's very very good. And obviously, the the analog at Chipotle starting in 2018 has um, uh, formed some of the dialogue around the move in Starbucks. We just think this is a much more complicated, larger uh, global um, organization and. You know, it's going to be a heavier lift and take a longer period of time. And we think the next, you know, next few things Brian's going to have to talk about are um, a little going to bring a little bit of dose of reality and, and you know, kind of create some pressure on the stock, um, you know, for the, the near to medium term. What does Brian Nickel need to do to turn you from a bear to a bull? Well, first thing he's going to need to do is build his team because there's clearly uh, been some shortcomings um, at Starbucks 
He's going to need to um, work on the culture and the people side of things. Um, in my view, uh, some foundational elements have been um, rocked a little bit, I'll say, by the complexity that the former CEO has brought to the business in the past year through a lot of innovation that really didn't work in terms of driving incremental sales, but added complexity to the um, hourly team member or partner's jobs, which is then rippled through in terms of uh, slower service times and not as good an experience as maybe folks remembered from the Starbucks of old. So I think it's really uh, stabilizing, building the team and um, really reinvigorating the culture. And all those things take a lot of time. And that's um, that's where we think, um, you know, there's a bit of a disconnect between the 25 billion or so of market cap that um, has been gained since Brian joined. So just finally, all of those points that you want to see Brian Nickel really address sound very Starbucks specific. So I was wondering if there's a macro read through in terms of bullish on the value play, bearish on the more expensive option. Doesn't necessarily seem to be the case, but could there be a broader read through to, in terms of your take on the consumer based on your calls here? Yeah, cl clearly six months ago, um, we, we were bullish at McDonald's would be able to figure out value and we were bearish, not at an underperform, but we were skeptical of the direction that Starbucks was going and, and thought it was a, uh, a, a lot more complicated and a longer term fix. I think that's playing out now. Both stocks have obviously rallied nicely, one because of fundamentals, one because of a management change, which I understand, but um, a lot of wood to still chop for, you know, for Brian Nickel at, um, at Starbucks. So uh, we continue to favor McDonald's. Yes, we do think part of the element of Starbucks poor sales performance has been some um, demand elasticity and um, some pricing they've taken um, where maybe that occasional or um, incremental guest is not, not visiting anymore because of some of those, um, those price increases. All right. Interestingly enough, the consumer discretionary sector is lower, but Starbucks is higher today. Uh, a winner, uh, kind of a surprising winner, I guess. Andy Barish, Managing Director Jeffries, thanks so much.